In 2021, an HIV diagnosis can be as manageable as a diagnosis of high blood pressure. Left untreated, either condition can lead to significant health complications and even death. Uncontrolled high blood pressure can cause a heart attack or stroke, while untreated HIV can progress to a point where your body is no longer able to fight off infection. However, with proper medical care and the right medications, both conditions can be controlled. In this video, we're talking about HIV. We will cover what HIV is and how HIV affects the immune system. HIV stands for the Human Immunodeficiency Virus. HIV weakens the immune system's ability to fight other infections. HIV does this by attaching itself to a type of human cells known as the helper T cells. HIV uses helper T cells to create more and more copies of itself. These copies are eventually released into the blood and the helper T cells are destroyed. So what are helper T cells and why are they important? Imagine you're calling 911 for help in a crisis. Helper T cells are the 911 operators that pick up your call, assess the situation, and send out the exact resources you need at that moment. Helper T cells signal to other types of immune cells to do their job. So when helper T cells raise the alarm, these other cells spring into action to recognize and kill infected cells or germs that have entered our body. In HIV infection, helper T cells are destroyed as the virus makes more and more copies of itself. With fewer helper T cells, we're unable to alert our body to defend itself from infection with other viruses, bacteria, or even fungi. Without medication, eventually the number of helper T cells drops so low that the body cannot effectively fight infections of any kind. At this point, HIV has developed into AIDS. AIDS stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome, and the progression from HIV to AIDS usually takes about 8 to 10 years without treatment. Let's break that down a little bit more. There are three stages of HIV. Acute HIV infection, chronic HIV infection, and lastly, AIDS. Stage 1 is the acute HIV infection. This stage will begin as early as two to four weeks after contracting HIV. At this point, there is a lot of HIV in the body. The body attempts to fight off this new HIV infection, which can lead to flu-like symptoms, such as fever, chills, sore throat, fatigue, and muscle aches. Other possible symptoms include night sweats, rashes, swollen lymph nodes, or ulcers in your mouth. However, many people with acute HIV develop no symptoms at all. Stage two is the chronic HIV infection. HIV is reproducing at very low levels and helper T cells slowly but progressively decline. Most people infected with HIV do not have symptoms during this stage, although some people may have mild symptoms like having swollen lymph nodes. This phase is typically long and can last up to a decade, but for some people, the infection progresses more quickly. Stage three is what is known as AIDS. This is the most severe stage in which our immune system is so badly damaged, we're unable to fight off infections due to other viruses, bacteria, or fungi. The number of helper T cells has dropped so low that the body is left completely vulnerable. Infections, not commonly seen in folks with functioning immune systems, begin to occur frequently. These types of infections that occur when the immune system is severely damaged are called opportunistic infections. The germs are taking the opportunity to attack people with weakened or compromised immune systems. Three important things to emphasize here. People with HIV can spread the infection to other people at any stage. Number two, there is no cure for HIV. Once you have HIV, you have it for life. Medications called antiretroviral therapy can control and halt the progression of HIV infection to AIDS. They are called antiretroviral therapy because HIV is a retrovirus. Antiretroviral therapy are medications that stop HIV from making copies of itself in helper T cells. 
By preventing HIV from multiplying, the body can replenish its stock of helper T cells and help the immune system recover its normal function. Starting antiretroviral therapy as early as possible is really important to keep yourself healthy and to stop the spread of HIV to others. The only way to know if you have HIV is to get tested. There are some people who the CDC recommends getting tested for HIV every year. These include people who have had unprotected sex or sex without a condom, men who have sex with men, people who have injected drugs or other substances or shared injection equipment with others, people who are diagnosed with another sexually transmitted infection like gonorrhea or chlamydia, people who are diagnosed with hepatitis or tuberculosis, people who have exchanged sex for drugs or money, or anyone who has had sex with someone with an unknown sexual history. In addition, all pregnant women should be tested for HIV in order to protect both themselves and their child from potential HIV infection. We've covered a lot of information on this video. Let's recap. HIV is a virus that attacks our immune systems, leaving us unable to respond to infection. HIV does this by destroying helper T cells, the 911 operators of our immune system. Without medication, HIV infection progresses to AIDS over time. AIDS is when the number of helper T cells has dropped so low that the body is left completely vulnerable to infections by other germs. Antiretroviral therapy are medications that stop HIV from destroying helper T cells, allowing our immune system to return to normal function. The only way to know if you have HIV is to get tested. Reach out to your healthcare provider if you have questions or concerns, or visit the CDC's website on HIV for more information.